What do Florida, Texas, Mexico, Europe, and Holland, Michigan have in common? Finally tonight, a dismal economy, 16% unemployment, and frigid cold. Does this sound like the recipe for happiness? Well, a hard-hit town in Michigan has just been ranked by the Gallup Poll as one of the happiest places in the whole USA. When most of us think of happy, we think of this. So how on earth can this be one of the top happiest places in America? Horrible blizzards, horrible unemployment, 16%. If a small community located in a state with the worst economy can feel good about itself, it seems to me we've got hope as a country. We'll arrive in town and ask these 35,000 people why they're so happy. The first answer, religion that reaches out. In fact, Holland is known as the city of churches, 170 places of worship offering practical help and paying it forward. You know, you need gas for the week. I've heard of several churches that will give you gas cards. If people are out of work, we try to help them in some way. If they're our neighbors, we'll try to steer something their way. In Holland, there are 100 volunteer groups fanning out through the city, more than cities twice its size. And despite the unemployment, this area of the country was recently named one of the most generous regions in the U.S. Another word we kept hearing, family. Families that live near each other have dinner at night. By the way, the crime rate in Holland is one half the nation's. So think of this as a city still living in a Norman Rockwell world. Sometimes it's just nice to remember that solutions do not come from the maze in Washington. But the simple things we know about caring about the neighbor next door. And the Dutch who founded Holland, surprise, surprise, 163 years ago, have a word for that happy feeling you get when you're close to each other. It's called gezellig. Be gentle with me on that. But have a gezellig night and hope to see you again tomorrow. Unknown to us or anyone else in Holland, Michigan, Ramona Scott watched that news story in her apartment in Brooklyn, New York. She was so impressed, as she said, with the love, care, and happiness of your residents that she wanted to pay it forward, as she had seen on the Oprah Winfrey show, but had never done herself. She wanted to give without expectation of return. The next day, she sat down and wrote a check to the city of Holland and the mayor with a letter asking that the $250 she sent be given out in $25 increments to people who could use a little help to brighten their day. Little did she know that her envelope contained a challenge much bigger than any check she could have written. It was a challenge for us to think, to dream, to work, and to communicate a message. In short, to do more good. It was an unusual gift, to say the least, an unsolicited check to be given in benevolent ways from someone who had never been to Holland, Michigan, inspired by a good news story about Holland's residents and a pay-it-forward seed planted by Oprah Winfrey. Mayor Dykstra took the letter to our city council meeting. We were all impressed and challenged by Ramona's magnanimous gesture of goodwill so many miles away. The question lay before us. Do we find 10 stretched people, hand out $25 each, and call it good? Something about that sounded too short, like an ending before its time. There was more to Ramona's vision than the $250. It was her desire to pay it forward that gave us pause. How could we honor the size of that vision with $250? The mayor decided to give me the assignment, probably because of my passion for growing Ramona's benevolent investment, and it was an exciting place to be. But it was also a bit of an overwhelming responsibility. 
But since Highland, Michigan is the second most philanthropic area of the country, finding generous, creative people was not hard. So I began with a long list of people who had shared their generous hearts and minds in this area for over the years, asking them for advice on how to grow Ramona's vision. All were inspired by her gesture and eager to offer ideas. One such idea quickly rose to the top. Brad Seif, president of Dry Design, and his wife, Diane, said, what if I could go to Taco Bell, leave some money in a card that said, pay it forward Holland with a website, then ask the clerk to take that amount of money off the next person's bill and then hand them the card. The recipient could go to the website and record their reaction to that kindness that they just experienced. And then they would be inspired to do something kind for someone else. And so it would go so that yet that number on the card could be traced from Michigan to Colorado or Tennessee or wherever, changing people's days and perspectives and helping them to think in terms of helping others. It sounded great. It had never been done. So Brad suggested his marketer, Stevens Advertising, to see if they might be willing to help pursue such a noble but so far unattainable goal. To make a long story short, Mike Muller, VP of Stevens Advertising, agreed and invented. His team developed the logo and worked on the website in the spirit of paying it forward by not charging at all. Allegra Printing produced 100 cards for free, and eventually Dan Gorris of Custom Printing donated the next 5,000 cards. Then, during a blowing snowstorm on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, January 17, 2010, Mayor Dykstra and the council held a press conference outside to announce this concept to the world. By then, the original $250 had grown to $900 through community donations inspired by Ramona. After the presentation, another 100 came in from the audience. The total $1,000 was given out in $100 increments to different organizations in the area to help people of various backgrounds and ages, asking them to give out the money as Ramona had requested, $25 each. The stories of grateful recipients were then forwarded on to Ramona, and she was deeply touched. The response to the Pay It Forward Holland initiative was amazing. Orders for cards came in from all over the country, hits on the website from all over the world. Media attention helped people to stop, to think about their neighbor. The stories were heartwarming both here in Holland and in an apartment in Brooklyn, New York. The interest in Ramona and her tender spirit continued to grow. Eventually, Dean Whitaker, a businessman in town, offered to fly Ramona to Holland if she'd be willing to come for our city's nationally acclaimed Tulip Time Festival. She said she would. So we formed a committee when, with the help of the Tulip Time Board, Holland Convention and Visitors Bureau, several citizens and restaurant owners, we were able to provide Ramona with an all-expense-paid trip to Holland for Tulip Time Festival 2011. Thank you very much. A New York woman who sparked a national campaign that started in Holland is being honored this weekend in the Tulip City. Ramona Scott donated $250 to the city of Holland after she saw an ABC News story on the city being named the second happiest place to live in the U.S. WZZM 13 Steve Patterson captured a special moment as she was welcomed to Michigan and received the thanks of an entire city. Gather around! Now Gather this around. is a welcome, we Holland style. <laughs> welcome, Ramona Scott. We thank you for what you've done. Five months ago, New York City resident Ramona Scott donated $250 to the city of Holland after being inspired by the city's generosity in a new story about it being named the second happiest place in the U.S. I decided to try to do something small to try to make someone a little happier. Never been here? Yeah. Doesn't know us from a hole in the wall? Nothing. <laughs> Passing on to the others, we knew what do we need. This Ramona is a movement 
which shows a mighty deed. That 250 bucks was the seed story. money for a national campaign. Pay it forward is the slogan. Yes, the movement has begun. Asking the country to pass along random acts of kindness tracked by an online database. You've put smiles on many faces. What a lot of fun. I would say we've given out probably close to 8,000 cards. It is happening in many places and other places too. Places in 29 countries, including Canada, France, and as far away as Japan. The little things you could do could mean something big to someone. But it all started in Holland, and we owe it all to you. Spread the word! Spread the word! In Grand Rapids, Steve Patterson. Spread the word! WZZM 13 News. <laughs> Ramona and Nancy left the airport for a dinner date with Holland Mayor Kirk Dykstra tonight. All weekend, she will be treated to everything Tulip Time has to offer, including a place of honor in the Tulip Time Parade on Saturday. Ramona rode in a convertible in that biggest parade of the festival on Saturday, enjoying the thanks of the crowd for her generosity and her encouragement to the city. One quiet evening in February, Ramona Scott wrote a check to nurture the growth of happiness in the world. Her gift to a place she had never been, to benefit people she would never meet, has inspired people all over the world. Now, every one of us has the opportunity to do the same even anonymously, and possibly watch that one little seed of good grow a forest of good, perhaps around the city, the country, or even the world. The Man Who Planted Trees is a story written by Jean Giano, and that appeared in the 1954 edition of Vogue magazine. The story tells of a shepherd who, after his wife and son died, moved to a remote and desolate wilderness area in southeastern France. Rather than whittle his time away, he purposed to plant 100 acorns every day. And so he did. Eventually, forsaken, barren landscape became havens for families in fruitful cities filled with laughter and beauty all because a man of great simplicity and determination through war or peace continued day by day throughout the remaining decades of his life to change the scenery one seed at a time. Such is the potential of Pay It Forward Holland. If each of us would plant one good deed per day, per week, or even per month, we will reap a harvest of good in the world. People will be refreshed by the gentle shade of another's generosity, encouraged by the gentleness of unsought blessing, and humbled by the quiet grace of sacrificial kindness. They will be inspired to reach out to those around them as they carry a perspective in their pocket with a Pay It Forward Holland card. So what have others done? Companies have requested a card for every employee. Teachers have asked for cards for their class. Individuals have ordered as few as one to help someone. Whatever the gift time, service, or finances, it will touch the heart of the recipient in a way no earned or expected gift ever has. Generosity with no expectation of reciprocation inspires the receiver, often sending each into a whole new world, celebrating the delight of giving. So far, People from 29 countries have clicked on the Pay It Forward Holland website with over 9,604 unique visits and 41,098 pages viewed. Orders for the cards have come from 21 states and three provinces in Canada. 1,300 cards have been downloaded from the site and over 10,000 cards have been requested and sent. Cards have been left everywhere from Hope College near downtown Holland to Cape Town, South Africa. So what do Florida, Texas, Mexico, Europe, and Holland, Michigan have in common? A sixth grader in Holland Public Schools was given a pay-it-forward card from his social studies teacher, Carol Smith. 
Nate Jansen took his card to the Bittersweet Ski Resort, where he helped an out-of-state visitor up after a fall and handed him a card. Nate kept the number and watched his kindness in Michigan travel to, you guessed it, Florida, Texas, Mexico, and Europe so far. Each of these locations have been sites for random goodness, thereby changing hearts, perspectives, possibly lives. So where does Pay It Forward Holland go from here? Who knows? Already, one letter from Brooklyn has changed much in Holland and beyond. Who knows what virtual Pay It Forward sister cities linked to the Pay It Forward Holland site could do around the world? Who knows what a region of people who plant good deeds day by day could do in changing the landscape of a hurting world? Just as the man who planted trees planted hope and happiness, those who quietly, purposefully live to give plant a perspective that makes the world a better place. It can be as simple as a free oil change that changes a person's attitude. Sometimes it's a plate of cookies at the door. Maybe it's a free hamburger at McDonald's or cheerful help moving. It's simple. It's profound. And it is possible. Each and every one of us will have the opportunity to make a difference in the life of someone today. Each of us can choose to simply plant a seed of good and make a profound impact in the life of another. What will each of us do with the card we are about to receive? And please take one and pass it on. Pay it forward, Holland. Thank you.